Good morning guys, this is Richard back at you. It's a beautiful week here in Amarillo. It's been raining. We just love it. We've got a lot of work to do in the house, let me tell you, plus the parking lot's full, so we got to really get going. But we got Cody here putting in a Ford transmission, a 5R110. Uh, it was just all messed up. I mean, didn't want to move in reverse, uh, delays, all kinds of stuff. So we, we uh, Cody's putting this one in. Got the old one sitting here. We got uh, Richard all the way from uh, California. Now he was traveling down the highway, watches all of our videos, pulling a trailer for the first time with the truck and noticed that the transmission was having some, some severe issues. Uh, we got it in here, uh, really no codes, but the fluid is really caramel looking, uh, really varnished. Uh, he said it didn't want to hold fourth gear. He's having to hold the gas pedal down so much. So uh, 157,000 miles. Uh, so we're going to get in here and get this thing apart. But we got Hayden here today. Uh, she's out of school. Uh, you know, our grandchildren uh, always want to come down and work, make that extra buck so they can have something. Uh, for their junior dragsters. Oh, that's right. Uh, parts for the uh, junior dragsters, that's for sure. But we got Hayden holding a Hayden cooler uh, that we're going to be putting on uh, Richard's truck. So we're going to, the coolers on these trucks, I mean, they're about this uh, tall about that wide they're, they're a little bitty bitty and they just don't, don't uh, work at all especially when you put a trailer on them so what well, we got Hayden holding a Hayden cooler isn't that neat but Annie let's go come on let's go uh, get this tranny apart you ready walk really so come on they're so sweet <laughs> I gotta walk back we got a problem child here too that we've been working on we're, we're really gaining ground on it that old GMC so I tell you, we get some in here sometimes that you would not believe what we go through, the hours that we put in and physically the hours that we lose uh, when we do them jobs. But, uh, you know, it, it, it just is what it is. Well, guys, it's beautiful outside, raining. You got to love it. So, but anyway, like I said, we got Richard's uh, 02 Chevy Silverado in the house, 5'3", uh, 157,000 miles, all original, never been messed with, so that's what we like. So... We got a lot of uh, parts here that we're going to be putting in it. Uh, we got our uh, input sprag, our lower sprag. We got our Sonex pump bushing. Uh, we got our Z pack, our hardened shell, our reverse drum, wide band, our complete pump kit here, bushing kit, all aluminum pistons here, really nice. Might even put the uh, pinless uh, Sonex piston in the one two accumulator. So there's a few more things that we got uh, that we'll be laying in here too, some solenoids and stuff like that. We've got our wiring harness. So a lot of parts. I mean, we, we put a lot of parts, but let me get a drink real quick. My mouth's a little dry. Gotta love the Sonex koozie. <laughs> you know, me and Teresa just got back from Sonex. I uh, got to go down there and tour from some facilities and stuff like that. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Come back, try to make a video. We had jet lag like crazy. We could barely talk, think, of even function. I mean, it was that bad. I mean, three planes there, three planes back. Had motion sickness. Motion, yeah, it was really terrible. Altitude sickness. Yeah, definitely. But uh, let me tell you guys, we learned so much when we went down there. It was unreal. Uh, it, it, I wish everybody could go and set in on meetings like that. Because uh, just a little bit that I've maintained uh, when we brought back to our shop, it's going to help us a ton in our customers' uh, transmissions that we build back, so it's pretty neat. So, but anyway, two-wheel drive. I say this is all factory. Bushing looks decent, not just down to the brass or anything like that. You can see our speed sensor down in there. Now, some of these right here we noticed they start expanding. I, I don't know if it's because of uh, the sensor gets hot, but the end of it will always start pooching out. And it'll start actually rubbing the reluctor. See that? See how it's starting to pooch out? So anytime you get one like that, you definitely want to replace it. Because another few miles or 50, you know, 20,000, whatever, it's going to pooch out enough where it's going to knock a hole in the end of it right here. Oh, I forgot about that. Hang on one second, guys. Uh, we're doing a special video for the customer. I want to make sure his camera's on. Hey, Trent, you want to uh, turn the camera on for the customer really quick? He wanted to have his own little video, so we wanted to do that for him. 
We don't normally do that, but it just I'm not sure if that's on and working. Oh. Is, is it recording? Yeah, oh, I totally forgot. I'm so sorry, guys. Well, I just thought about it. So pretty simple. We're not too far. Nope. Yeah. Good. Mm. But it's going to be nice to get into a transmission okay. that hasn't been touched or anything like that. Go ahead and get our servo out of here. Woo. Are you making noises? Right. I'm making Woo. noises. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, when it rains here, it just makes everybody feel good. It does, because that's just something we don't get a lot of anymore. Yeah, without the wind. I could show you some dust storms that we've had come through here. Been unreal. Just your factory servo. You know, still even you want to check the 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 bore on the overdrive piston right here. Just make sure it doesn't wobble. Always put new rings. Now we're going to be putting a Corvette servo on here no matter what. Uh, just because he's towing, we want a lot more uh, apply pressure on the band. Now, a lot of times, guys, what we do is we come in here. You can see the distance between this uh, plate here and the piston, that right there. You can take what I like to do. This right here is out of a 48RE uh, shift kit. And what this does, this will fit right over that pin. See? What we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll put this in between here. Let me show you. Richard, you just show them. I'm going to show them. But how I put it together, I stick the pin through there. I put this on there like that. Put it together like that. And what it does is it'll take up the gap between here and here just a little bit. And I mean, you would not believe the difference uh, it makes by doing that on the intermediate uh, shift, second gear shift. So some of your shift kits will come with spacers that go in here. I never want to take it completely up because then you'll have a harsh downshift when you come to a stop. But I do like to take half of that up right there. So pretty simple. Some of your shift kits will have you put three springs in here. Even after we put the three springs in, I still put my spacer in here and take that gap up right there. You can kind of see it right there a little bit. It's got fluid on it, but I still have, you know, probably 30 thousandths where that spring is still in use. This spring is still in use. So, but it, it really firms up the intermediate shift a ton. Especially if you're manually shifting, race car in it and stuff like that. Teresa, we got any fluid in that connector? It doesn't look like it. Looks pretty it. dry, it looks doesn't it? Pretty dry. Pretty dry. So we got all of our bolts out except for them. I didn't know if I was going to fight them. So I went ahead and worked that on that. We have our lockup seal here. Looks pretty square. Still got color, at least. Yeah. Black. Just flat on the outer edge right here. Kind of see right there. It was sticking up out of the groove a little bit, but not much. It was really starting to shrink. One thing good about this shaft spins, so it, it keeps it trying to get out like that and keeps it sealed. But after a while, it does go away. Of course, we have our front seal retainer. So I always glue them on, and I always glue my front seal in. That way that can't pop off. They, these pop off real easy. Sure feels good to be back though, doesn't it, Tracy? Well, I'm feeling a little bit more normal than I did in my last video. That long weekend was nice. Yeah. But we trimmed trees at the house, went to the dump twice, 90 mile an hour wind, and it was terrible. But we survived it. Yeah. You can see the gentleman's pan right here. 
Almost looks like it's got the original pan gasket on it. It does, the way these stick on there. Not a whole lot of crud on the magnet. It's just been a while since it's been serviced, it looks like maybe. A lot of people service them and leave the, leave the original gasket on there because they can't get it off and they just stick it back on. Which that's probably better than using a rubber one. You can see your filter's pretty dirty in there. A lot of brass up on top. Mm-hmm. Say so we're saving all of our oil to get ready for winter already because you know it don't take but a few months to get here. <laughs> Around here. We have our PWM solenoid here. Change your O-rings here. I do have a tester. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a video today and try to t show y'all how we test and flow some of these. It's pretty simple. We have a really neat tester. Get our detent spring off. I keep turning that. I'm trying to turn it towards them, but I know you're holding the camera high up in the air. Well. That's okay. Now we do have a new wiring harness for this, so uh, if your wiring harness isn't leaking and you're doing it at the, at the house, you can cut this solenoid off and put a retrofit one on here. It'll fit the 200 4Rs and the 4L60Es and stuff, 700s. So, so actually I got a couple over there. But you just cut them off and uh, crimp them in. Got our three long 10 millimeters here, and then the 10 millimeters here just a tad shorter. And then we have our shortest ones here. And then we have our eight here. Our two short short eights and then we have our long eights. Just remember this little L shaped right here. Don't want to get these mixed up and put them down the center of the barrel or anything because you'll rub. This will come through the case and rub your shell or something like that. So have our pillow switch. All these just pop off there. So you can clean all this up, change your O-rings and your little piston uh, pieces in there, put this all back together. So there was no codes for it, you just need to rebuild it. If not, if you don't have one, rep just replace it, they're not very expensive. Now this is the early design uh, tranny, it's got the solenoid, or the pressure control solenoid, uh, the connector slides on the end instead of on the side here. Yeah, that's how you can tell. Of course, we have a plastic uh, accumulator piston for your forward engagement. So we always go back with an aluminum one. If you can just see them here. The pin usually starts in the bore right here and then this will crack right down the center and then we start slipping and, and forward. So. The pressure control solenoid. So we always replace those no matter what. If any solenoid that fails in this tranny, none of them will take the tranny out except this one right here. I mean, if your lockup solenoid fails, of course, yeah, it's gonna, you know, burn the converter up if you're, you're not careful. But if this solenoid here fails in any form, fashion, or way, especially in the, on the low side, then the tranny's gonna be, it'll just take the tranny right out. 
See if we got anything done here. Looks like all of our valves are stuck in here too. Nothing been done. I like that. Just remember, anytime you pull your PWM valve out, make sure you always put the little in first. If you put it in like this, it'll work, believe it or not, but it'll have some funky lockup. So you definitely want to turn this around like that. Now we do block these with check valve balls. We'll put a ball there, ball here, put it back in like that, and it blocks it out. So pretty simple. Of course, you have your one, two accumulator valve right here, along with your second stage right here. So anytime you get a shift kit, they're gonna to talk to you about this valve right here and spring in here, matching your servo. So, uh, Very just something, important. yeah, it's something you wanna know. Of course, on your solenoids too, you wanna, Change your O-rings. A lot of times these still feel kind of tight, but most times they're, they're so loose that uh, the fluid leaks around this O-ring so bad that it doesn't want to move the, the shift valve. So all these O-rings come in your kit. And then you always want to, even on your new ones, uh, clean them and then listen for a, a shake. There's no shake. Now, it could be because there's fluid in it, just keeping it from moving. But when they're clean and dry, there should be a rattle inside that solenoid. See, we got all of our check balls here. Got one here too. Now you can see here, 90% of the time, you're gonna have plate wear right here with this check ball sets. Now they do make repair, where you can repair this hole right here, but you want to look at them all. And then we always go back with a, a rubber style check ball. That way it never happens again. And then we come in here and enlarge our fourth gear hole, our second gear hole, and then our third gear feet here. We'll enlarge these three holes right here. Okay. So now just because we put the Corvette servo in this unit, doesn't mean it's going to stay because once we do our modifications and we put it in if it shifts too firm or something like that and we don't like it the Corvette servo is the easiest thing to take back out and, and play with if your second gear shift is too firm your third gear shift is too firm you know stuff like that so without having to drop the pan take a lot of time we have our intermediate servo here this is the latest design which I don't like them at all I like the, the second design but we always upgrade our piston we always want to upgrade to the, the long shank style piston that way it has more support always look here on the sides too for any type of rubbing if this piston gets wore here and it starts rubbing on the side it can wear ruts down through here and then this uh, servo cover piston or cover is no good Okay, pretty simple. Just remember your round hole, square hole, valve body case, top and bottom, round hole, square hole. And then you have your fourth gear accumulator. You know we always block that. Stack another piston on top of it. We don't ever beat a check ball in the case and ruin the case because you can't get the check you can't ever go back once you beat the check ball in there so we just double stack pistons uh, about 30,000 spacer in between get it flush it cannot stick above it if it sticks above it and you tighten this down on top you can have a leak through here so you want to make sure that that piston is below not above it Ok, 
Okay, grab your park linkage here, turn your output shaft, lock it down. Make sure that's out of the way and you can get in there. Very simple. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Like I say too, I've never said it, but you don't see it a lot on these units here, the end right here coming off. This piece here sliding back and locking the vehicle in park. But it does happen. The 440T4s, 4T65s and stuff like that, they had major problems with that end coming off right there and locking the train in park. What's crazy, I'm hoping we got a Buick out in the parking lot that's got a, a front wheel drive in it that I'm going to just dive in like a piece of ice cream and cake. Because <laughs> believe me, we've done so many of them in the past and we just don't see them hardly anymore. And it's just always nice to do something different when you've done so many trannies in your lifetime. Yeah. So, uh, we have our check ball here and here. No other check balls in the case besides this in this capsule. If this falls out, you can leave it out. It doesn't matter. You don't have to put it back in. Now, right when we get done tearing this down, this fanny will be built right back. Every one of our units we do, or every one of our videos we do, right when we get done, that case is stripped, cleaned, and in the washing machine within 30 minutes after the video is made. People think, what do you do, tear them down and throw them out back? Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? But if you go to our uh, YouTube channel and look at our page or our video count up top, we started this channel about two years ago, a little over two years. Has yeah. it been that long? Yeah. But anyway, go look how many videos we posted since we started doing this. Because we, I think we're up to like 560 videos. So that tells you that we've ran 560 units across this table. So think of that. And Trent does do building, but I do probably 80% of it. So... You know, I've built 500 units in a short period of time. And we don't have comebacks unless people install them. So we quit doing that, so we pretty much 100% uh, eliminated our comebacks by us installing them, period. I've talked to, actually I talked to the, a gentleman that uh, actually trained me 40 years ago. Uh, he called me, and I'm going to give you out his name. His name's Tim Holt. I mean, one of the best trainer builders in, in the world i'm telling you what this guy has been there done it all and and, and he's just a really good guy but um i i just can't say enough about him to tell you the truth i mean i, I learned so much uh from tim but anyway not sure where i was going with this but uh, uh when i start thinking about him it just it, i could almost cry but he he actually called me yesterday because he had a heart attack they put five stents in him and stuff and then he wanted to talk so wow. but anyway here's our filter here you never want to leave this out uh, if you leave it out or leave the o-ring off of it uh, the tranny will fill up full of fluid and everything but when you put it into gear it doesn't want to move it'll slip going forwards and backwards so if you ever do that you 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 just remember that filter if you leave the o-ring off or leave it out you're in trouble the last thing I do and I I mean I change it right off the bat when I get this uh, bushings replaced and all that type of stuff I change this and even when I get the pump redone and aligned, I spin it and I look for that filter. That way I know in my mind I replaced it because it's so simple to leave out. So, let's see what our pressure regulator valve looks like real good, quick. We have a two ringer style pressure regulator valve. Now we are gonna bump, put a boost valve in this here, a little bit bigger boost valve. Just knowing uh, we're gonna have good pressure rise and stuff like that when he's towing that trailer. But like I said, when you change these boost valves out, you gotta be careful because here comes firmer shifts, stuff like that. And then here comes out, we, we have to pull the Corvette servo out. So there's just a lot of things. Uh, you just can't put all the hop, just buy every high performance part and put it in a train and expect it to work without putting a pressure gauge on it. How does that sound, Teresa? Very good. That's how, it's, that's how it is. So, but um, this is the long style two ringer. 
quite a bit of bushing wear really shiny this bushing wears out completely here down through here with these ceiling rings run it'll it'll start rubbing and wearing it out through here now the bushing we put back in this end will be a wide bushing and the, your uh, bushing kit will come with two bushings for this a narrow and a wide uh, we put the wide in every one of them even if it's a 700 because it will retrofit in there so now you can see here definitely we could we're going to be spacing the, com the converter because we're just barely catching that pump now when we put a bigger boost valve in here you know pressure is going to rise once pressure rises here we got more force on this uh these two lugs right here on this pump rotor so i mean we've we've actually broke these off in uh high performance applications with a gauge on it shifting out with a whole lot of pressure and physically just strip these right off on a brand new unit so. Indeed, it's barely catching that thing. Now we put our new converter in. It's going to uh, probably set in a different spot even than that one there. But we're definitely going to check it and see if we have to, to move it. Whew. Boy, this thing is war, war plumb out. You can see our pump slide, how it's just war plumb through the bluing here. Oh, yeah. It's war plumb out. It's fixing to actually start shaving metal. Mm -hmm down through here mm -hmm. you know a lot a lot of times pin wear causes uh, in or the, where the pin doesn't or this paddle doesn't set on there equally it might uh, be crooked because this is setting in there not perfectly straight especially when you get a lot of pin wear you can actually see some here I can grab a little bit of it with my finger but not as bad as I've seen before you know even through here even possibly through here so definitely warp them out now, on your pressure regulator valves down through here, you know, since it's, these all come out with steel valves, we really don't see a lot of wear through here. Now, we will Sonex vacuum test this end right through here and just see what type of wear we have. Uh, normally, they check out really good. Now, if you had a 6L80, 6L90, you already know you're in trouble. So, when you vacuum test it, you already know it's going to be bad and you're just going to repair it. So, pretty simple. We don't see no odd wear pattern on the bushing. Looks even all the way around. That's nice. Got our pump washer there. We always like to knock our band strut loose right here so you can just pull this straight out. And you can grab it right here. So this sets in there. Now this is a high energy band. Looks like it still has a little bit of life on it, but it's it's still you know starting to get a little thin, a little life on it. Same way here on this drum here, you want to check from here to here and make sure it's not bowed in the middle. I have a new drum setting out already uh, that we're going to check it, make sure it's flat anyway. But we're going to put a new drum in it. We're going to put a wide band on it, and we definitely want to make sure that it's that wide band's uh, touching all the way across. Any bushing wear here. You want to check down through here and make sure it wasn't rubbing on your stator. See your reverse clutch looks really good. You also want to look around here and look for any type of wear. Because you'll get this wave fight doing all kinds of crazy stuff in here. Your clutches will do crazy stuff. So you want to look for any type of wear in here. Ceiling ring wear. You can just tell that, you know, they're just getting wore out for the mileage. This one here is really bad. Mm -hmm. This one down here, I mean, they're just really wore. They say, uh, if we pull this, without pulling this tranny apart, if we tried to put a boost valve in or something, these seals would just, they'd just fail. Get our bearing out here. You always want to check this one. You always want to check your... Uh, now this is a selective shim right here. Let me get that out of there. There we go. You want to always check these really good because you always find tons of wear on them. If this bearing starts going bad, it starts spinning this washer in the bore down here. 
you can see how how it looks. Mm -hmm. So, but it'll do it without the bearing being bad too. But when the bearing starts really getting bad, it'll start spinning it. The whole bearing down in here and grabs the the race and turns it. So. I won't spray trees. I just want to watch our 3-4 clutch work. Still holding. Now why it's going down is because it physically has a little orifice right here that bleeds off. You can see it there. So when I blow through the clutch, I can hold that and it'll hold. It'll stay completely. The clutch will not leak down unless the piston's bad or something like that down in there. And then you have your engine brake clutch and your forward clutch too. You can't see them apply a little bit you can okay. um. we're on a very busy intersection aren't we yes there's always some type of siren going on yeah. over here well you see here how this three four clutch is starting to wear the teeth on it right here mm-hmm Trying to wear it off. That's a common problem. We see a lot. All of them are that way. Actually, it's starting to strip them. Some are worse than others. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have our load springs here. These things are starting to get expensive. When you buy, buy them by the hundreds, I mean, that's a bill. Because a lot of them, we get a lot of units we get in here, they're not even in there no more, and we put every one of them back. We check them with the height with a new one and then uh, make sure they're good, because they can look good and be bad. So. Now, when we put Z-Packs in these, we always uh, keep this plate here. We'll check it and make sure it's not bowed like this. Uh, if it's bowed like throw it away, uh, but if it's flat all the way across, some of our uh, ten or our nine clutch kits we have, uh, we'll use this plate in. We'll, that's why we keep these, so. Your forward clutch here. Trying they to get some wear. Harder on the outside than they do the inside. Mm -hmm. Some of them look harder on the inside. It's starting to wear it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, just a lot of age. I say, what year was this truck? It was a 02. 02. 02. 02. Yeah. But he could tell with the trailer on it that it was really weak. Get off there. There we go. On this uh, hub here, from here to here you want to check. It's already got grooves, just war plumb in it. Oh, yeah. You definitely want to replace that. When they come out with the brass style uh, rings for the Sprags, this washer, brass washer would eat into this metal. And it'll physically almost lock into a groove just like that, see? You mm -hmm. can't slide it. Mm -hmm. When normally it should just be smooth all the way around. But if you take and wipe all that dirt off this thing, you can see here where there's a big old lip. Mm -hmm. You take it off here, this one will look brand new. So this metal here must be a lot harder than this here or something. I don't know why, why it does it, but it does it on every one. This piece always look good, but you want to check your inner sprag race here, scotch brought it up good, check your sun gear, change your bushings out here, always scotch bright your outer race. A lot of things to do. Got a snap ring off. Well, this is a, a you don't see this much. No, I thought they got rid of these in, around there, but anyway, we do have a thrust washer style. Uh, hub here, spines into your forward outer ring gear for your clutches and your planet. A lot of times, uh, well, when they had this, this style here, we really didn't see a lot of wear here, even though we do have some wear here for the mileage. Normally we see wear here. 
not here. But the later versions, the roller bearing style, we started seeing wear through here. So we do have a new one here. We got a, I got a bearing here. I guess how you can see the difference from a thrust washer and a roller bearing. Now you see the, the color dish, uh, how it looks like the coloring's coming off the bearing. When I had a customer, not a customer, but a, a YouTube uh, channel guy uh, asking questions about that. When he got a brand new bearing, he noticed it looked like that. And believe it or not, we take them out of the AC Delco bag and that bearing looks just like that. All of them too, I checked all of them. They all have a little bit of wobble right in here. If you notice that, see that wobble? They all have that little wobble. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. From your Sonex to your factory GM to your aftermarket, every one of them have that little bitty tiny wobble. But like I said, the bearings, when we open the bag, the bearing looks just like that. Brand new. So, pretty simple. But just remember, they do make two of these, two different sizes of this right through here. So you just got to pick the right one for your, your option or your planetary setup. If you see here, this bearing right here is centered by the planet. See, it's got a ring, a little notch all the way around. See, it centers it. Well, this here, it'll just rock around. Well, some of them aren't centered by the planet. They're centered by this. So when you put the bearing in there, the bearing is stationary and not the planet. So you just gotta, I keep both versions over there on the shelf. So you just gotta pick the one you want that fits. There is a year uh, split there for some reason. I, I'm not sure the year exactly. Or how about the one you need? Well, this is the one you want. Sounds good too. Nice, right, so I just keep everything over there on the shelf. The planet, you wanna look at both sides of the gears. Make sure there's no wear. Push down on this uh, bearing here. And put that in there. Turn it upside down. And you'll be able to feel a bad spot in that bearing. Right off the bat. Scotch right here up, because that's where your new bushing's gonna run. Your output shaft here. Want we'll to look for anywhere here, here, and here? Should have used my squeegee, Teresa. Thanks. Yeah. Probably. Okay. We got our hub down here. Sets down the case against a brass bushing. You want to look here for any type of wear. If it looks good, scotch brought it up, check your bearing. On your uh, ring gear right here, you can see right here, this ring gear is bad. See the pitting down in here? Mm -hmm. I can actually see so You can actually yeah. see that. A lot of times, on most of them, it starts about right here and goes up. Not so much on the bottom, but these here are, work, are equal all the way across the tooth, if you notice that. Okay, all the way across. Normally from here to here, but. So, definitely the ring gear is no good. You want to look at your sun gear. Look for any pitting, both sides, because you have a coast and a drive. Of course, you can see down here. You can see it's starting to oh, yeah, I see come that. apart right here. Mm -hmm. see? Yeah. So we definitely need a new sun gear. Now we have a new sun gear over here. I'll kind of show you what they look like new. Comes with a new bushing. You can put a Sonex wide bushing in there though. Give the gear a lot more support. Now you want to come over here and look at this planetary. If these got wear here and here, you definitely want to come in here and look at these gears. Mainly you want to turn them, check for wobble. There's wobble there. Little there, little there. So we know we're going to replace this plant just because uh, the gears are wobbling on the pins. But you want to still look for any type of uh, decaying of the tooth, just like the ring gear and the sun gear on both sides. Uh, if the pins feel good and there's no decay, you can use it. Always check that bearing down in here too, same way. Stick that sun gear there, push on it really hard and you'll be able to feel any bad spot in that bearing down in there. Okay. 
Now we like to use factory GM planets. We really don't like the aftermarket. Uh, we've just always had problems with them. Even when I go to try to buy an aftermarket one, they really don't like to sell them because they just don't have it down right. <laughs> I don't know why. We Seriously guys, we, we bought 15 of these one time, uh, put them in and 14 of them come back. And the only reason why the fifth one didn't come back is because uh, I still have it on the shelf. And what was happening, we make all of our, or we ask all of our customers to come back uh, to have a 3,000 mile service. That way when we drop the pan, we can see if anything is happening going on. If it's happening, we can address it right then without any major failures. So what we were having, we were having the little roller bearings falling out of this bearing right here. So we'd drop the pan, there'd be three or four of these little bearings right down in here, out of here in the pan. So uh, some people we called back and had them come back and we replaced them. And then uh, most of them come back on the services with the bearings in the pan. So luckily we didn't have no major, major failures, but 14 of them come back. I mean, we were very upset about that. Got your low reverse clutch. Your wave does not go against the steel. You got it like this. Wave always goes against the steel and then clutch steel all the way out the bottom, the top of me. So, of course the shell, looks like a hardened shell from the factory, but we're still gonna put one in there because they do uh, stress right through here. They'll break even out here on the edges right through here. You can see right there, we're starting to get some grooving on it. It, and, and that's a washer doing that right there, rubbing on it really hard. Of course, you want to look at your lower sprag assembly and your inner race. If it looks good, take and lock it on the back of your planet right here. Get you some Scotch Sprite. Go around that thing a few times, clean it up, get the shiny off of it, make sure it looks good, good to go. Same way with here. You want to clean this area up right here where your clutch is going to run. Put your new roller sprag in there. Roller clutch, sprag, they both do the same thing. Put your bearing down here, like that. Your four tab washer sets on top of, like that. Now, a lot of times, you know, we can only put so much, we put everything that we possibly can in these units that the customer can afford. We can't put ton of stuff in these that the customer can't afford to do so what we do is we build them just the best we can and we put the knowledge of 40 years into all of our units and, and that's just a uh, a big plus right there because I can take a stock unit and just do tweak it just a few ways and just up the their durability of the unit uh, tremendously but anyway guys we're sure glad to be back feeling a lot better unbelievable what six airplane rides will do to a person huh Teresa yep I'm never doing it again <laughs> Never doing it again. Never. Well, we definitely want to thank you for videoing, and we're glad you're back. Annie's hanging out over there, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Push that notification bell. Uh, we hopefully got a, a, a front-wheel drive coming in that I'm excited for. So y'all definitely want to stay tuned. Have a great day.